Well, grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome, my friends, to this edition of This Is My Story. I'll tell you today, I'm like a kid in the candy store. We got a very special guest today uh, that you don't want to miss. Listen, what I want you to do, if you're joining us, listen on all of our pages, Andre Sonny Woods, Fellowship of Music and Arts, Bishop Andre S. Woods, uh, listen, join right in and like and share and be a part of the conversation. I invite you to jump in the comment section and say your hellos to our guests. And if you have questions or whatever, join us today. We have one of the most influential voices in the world of, of the church today, in the universal body of Christ today. And uh, he is a legend. Uh, one of Detroit's own. I'm, I'm got to put that, that that out there now. He from Detroit now. We claiming him all of the way. Listen, friends, you want to uh, prepare your hearts as we welcome today to the platform of This Is My Story, my friend and brother for over some 40 some years, one and only Bishop Gregory Michael Davis. Blessings, man to God. Man, you're gonna make me cry. No, Doc, no, Doc. It's the no, truth. No, Doc. I promise you, I'm gonna cry before I get off of here. Cause let me say this. This is what thank you for having me. First of all, this is what you don't know. Uh -huh. Um, I saw you as a mentor, even though we're not that much older than each other. You were you were you were a mentor while I was running around. Uh, and I see some of the the welcome folk, Yolanda is on here, Yolanda Young and others. Oh, yeah. um, I was loading them up in the car coming down to your granddaddy's church and just to oh, hear yeah. your granddaddy and you play and to, to bring you to the 
I don't know if you remember this. I know you get ready to interview me, but the Bicentennial concert, we had just moved into Welcome and you were our guest musician in 1977. You don't even remember that. Man. Oh, man, man, man. And you played for something. It was like, oh my God, oh my God, Sonny Woods is gonna be our guest. Oh my God. So for you to say that, it, it, it means that I have made you proud, man. And, and, and I say, I remember that blue car. What was that car you had? Man, don't go back there. <laughs> yeah, it was a blue. I can't remember what it was. That blue. But that, that you was famous with that blue car. <laughs> man, yeah. But it's good to be here, man. It's good to be here. <laughs> man, I appreciate you, man. I'm telling you, when I listen, I want you to tell your story. I'm going to ask some questions. If you leave anything out, I'm going to help you fill in the blanks. Because <laughs> you, I, I Jesus, remember. man, the stuff that you was telling, you was saying before we came on the show, I'm yeah. like, you need to write my biography. <laughs> <laughs> man, yeah, Jesus. because you know what? I, I think it was a blessing and a privilege for me to be connected with friends like you, because we were all coming up through the ranks. We were all young and, and your grandfather and my grandfather, you know, taught and mentored us and trained us and, uh, you know, gave us opportunities that we wouldn't have had nowhere else. And we you got know, them the fellowship, man. Yeah, we were, the Baptist church and the spiritual church, we were fellowshipping Welcome Baptist Church and Neopolitan Spiritual Church. What a fellowship. And, and, and I've got to mention the late Reverend Charles Johnson. We called him Red. Charlie you Red. Know? Yeah, man, from Kettering High School Gospel Choir to come in to welcome. And, uh, you know, I, I did my first photo and rehearsal basically with, with my group Chosen at Welcome. I know? remember. I remember. The first picture I had, you know, LaWanda was a part of my group, Sharon Adams, Earl Fisher, Earl Fisher. And, and the late Valerie, Valerie Thomas. That yeah. was the real first chosen. Yeah. That a lot of people don't know the history about. And I still got a black and white picture that I was sitting on the organ with my Jerry Curl. And uh, <laughs> man, I still got that picture that we took at Welcome Baptist Church. Man, I tell you, we go back, man. A lot of people don't understand a lot of recordings and stuff took place. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of uh, musicals took place yes. at Welcome. At Welcome. Because man. it was unheard of to see a black church. My grandfather was ahead of time. Yeah. Move, move on the east side and take over a white church's building. You know, that right. wasn't heard of in the seventies. Right. It took right. over right. Parkside right. Baptist Church. They bought it. And yeah. that was unheard of. And to have uh four five hundred seats you know yeah. and and all that they call it campuses now but he was so ahead of his time to be an older man yeah yeah and 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 an open liberal man to yeah. ministry yeah. i mean e even across the board i mean welcome was one of those places where a lot of young preachers you know pastor, well, he would give them a chance you know uh, uh he gave he gave them opportunity to preach. He gave me so many opportunities to preach and, and to come and play for your musicals. You all invited me. And man, I mean, uh, it was just exciting. And you remember the live recording we did? Yeah, I do. Highway to Heaven, we took that song and made it a yeah. gospel song. Yeah. I still, I still got that. That was the bicentennial real. concert, I believe. That, that we recorded that. We, I, yeah. I still got that real to real. Yeah. Do you still have that real? Are you serious? I still got the real to real. Man, I was, I was always doing something. Jesus, man. This is the one that my grandfather didn't kick me out. I was. <laughs> no, man. But, 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 but he was such a great supporter of us. You know, yeah. I remember that. It was that maroon, big old Broham Cadillac. Oh, yeah. Sitting in front of the church. <laughs> Yes, yes, sir. Maroon cat, like he got one every two years. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, man. That 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 was some wonderful days and wonderful times that we we had. We came up to, and then uh, I I want you to just tell your story how your grandfather mentored you, prepared you for ministry, and you know uh, as you were already doing music as as choir director and bringing things to welcome. Uh, uh, he allowed you uh, to invite folk in, like you said, many, many musicals. Craig Brothers was in concert often. 
yeah, there. yeah, yeah, on and I on mean, and on, yeah, all of that, man, and and uh, how how you became an influential, influential voice. Uh, of our day, man. I mean, from then even to now. So tell us about the Welcome Baptist Church grooming days and 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 days when when you were under your grandfather's mentorship. So I got to my grandfather because um, my mother um, lived with her common law um, husband, and he was R and B singer. And I'll say who he was: uh, Sam or Sam and Dave. Hold on, I'm coming. I'm a soul man. The Blues Brothers were taken from from that. And um, my dad, my biological dad, which is my grandfather's son, came by one day in New York and said, I want to take him and send him to my parents. If not, because she had start um, hooking. She, she was a prostitute in a call house, not on the streets, but he saw the decay that my stepfather was shooting drugs and all that. And um that's how I got to Detroit. I got to Detroit, didn't want to go. Reverend Ananias Davis, didn't even know that he was a pastor, First Lady Davis, Welcome Baptist Church, and me being sent to Detroit is the reason why I'm still alive. Uh, that was 1971, Bishop, 1971, changed my life. Uh, I hadn't been going to school. Uh, my grandfather enrolled me in school. They put me a grade behind. I ended up graduating 3.8 average from Murray Wright High School, took up television production. Many people don't know that. You know that. Uh, yeah. I took up tele television production. Uh, and the rest is, is history. I started off being an usher at the church. Uh, uh, Canfield and Herbert. That's where our church was, little church on the corner on Camfield and Herbert. Mother Mosley was across the street. And I remember the presence of God hitting me in the back of the church in the big, his old pulpit chair against the furnace. I had on a light blue shirt and a black bow tie because I was an usher. I also was the assistant superintendent of Sunday school. I also cleaned the church. Uh, I did whatever it took to take the load. I didn't understand the preparation that was happening in my life. But my grandfather was and still is my hero. I learned how to be a man. I learned how to tie a tie. I learned how to give. I learned how to suffer. I learned, I learned everything about the church. And I keep him alive uh, by quoting him and always, I think people know my grandfather like he's still alive. Um, he then moved from Canfield and Herbert he always had a vision. We was one of the first Baptist churches that started tithing. Yeah, the Baptist church wasn't tithing back then. They was giving dues, Bishop. <laughs> and um, <laughs> you remember that? <laughs> they were giving oh, yeah, dues, yeah. $2 yes. dues. And my grandfather taught on tithing. And um, it was, we were able to move to, uh, from Canfield and Herbert to Mac and Philip, the Welcome Missionary Baptist Church, uh, about three, 400 seats. Uh, multi-purpose rooms, classrooms, basement. And it was known as the place that everybody rented for quartet programs, musicals, because my grandfather was free hearted. The young preachers developed there, Welton Smith's father, you, uh, many others. And then he brought in this musician, Miss Wynn was the musician, yeah. uh, Dorothy Wing, Wynn, she was plunking the piano. And um, he brought in the musician by the name of Charles Johnson. I don't even know how Charles got there, but um, Charles came and uh, that's how the relationship started. I started directing the choir. Uh, my Aunt Joanna started the midnight music, I mean, the um, uh, candlelight musical. I was her mm -hmm. assistant and uh, we had that every year. You know where we got that idea from? Neapolitan. We took it from y'all. We took it. <laughs> we we took it from it. We were sharing it. We got ideas from y'all because my grandfather, uh, allowed me to go and visit. Uh, it was a yeah. curse and a blessing. <laughs> it was a curse and a blessing. He had to sit me down a couple of times because I got beside myself. But we <laughs> were, the, the, the church circuit was uh, Neapolitan. Yeah. Uh, it, wa it was Neapolitan, Reverend Boyd's. Uh, and then it became Neapolitan, St. James and mm -hmm. Reverend Boyd's. And I would load up my LTD and put all of us in the car and we would church hop. My grandfather's very liberal. He let us dance and shout. The tongues and all that was a little, you know, as he got older, 
He even yeah. started accepting women preachers and stuff. So yeah. I am, I am because of him. And I went to Coletta Bonds and, and went to her conferences and got filled with the Holy Ghost and started listening to. So your grandfather would stand me up and say, young man, the Lord has a calling on your life. And I really could have started preaching when I was 18, 17, 18 years old, but I fought it uh, yeah. and did not start. Hey, Dr. Brock, I fought it uh, until I was uh, in my 20s. But your grandfather was the first one that I heard prophesy and yeah. stand folk up. Uh, and we used to have church at the Neapolitan Spiritual Church, yeah. 9201, 9201 Mac Avenue. Mac Avenue. Corner of Belvedere. <laughs> Man, yes, sir. yeah, yeah, yes, sir. And 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 man, you guys would come, and and we could wait. You know, back then, you know, we would have our morning service, and then uh, some auxiliary of the church would fix dinner, so we wouldn't have to go nowhere. Right. You know, for those of us didn't hit dot netters. Right <laughs> across the street. Right <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. sir. <laughs> I'm getting ready to have a flashback. I know, I know. <laughs> Bring back that netters. <laughs> yeah, man, and 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 man, when when Welcome Baptist Church, Reverend Ananias Davis, I mean, he was such a a a, a charismatic preacher. He could just stand on a dime. See, folk talk about what Lee Williams used to do. You know, just stand there. He could just stand there and and don't and start saying an amazing grace. Yes, sir. Doc. Listen, I'm telling you, and I I I, I, I remember those days, man. We would have so much good church. We didn't want it to end. No, we no. didn't want it to end. But man, I I I remember those and I cherish those days, and the opportunities that he gave me and you gave me to come, uh, uh and uh, be a part guest musician and do all those things we did together. And now, now you got to take us back to, to, to high school now, cause you know, you you were in that, you, I, I think you helped organize that choir, didn't you? So Murray Wright, I was supposed to go to Southeastern because I lived on the East side, but because they had just started a brand new television, uh, James Williams, hello. Uh, uh, I'm about to cry everybody on here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> because they had just started a um, television studio, brand new state of the art. I went to Murray Wright, me and Butch. You remember Butch, Keith Dinkins. Yeah, uh, yes. Yeah. So we both went there. Well, they let me in the varsity choir uh, and I couldn't sing a lick. Uh, I just listened to everybody else and, and just picked up the note. But Mr. Tatum, Miss Smith, yes. Miss Smith, Illiton Baptist Church, First Lady yeah. of Illiton. She was yeah. the piano player. Yeah. And I talked to her about a gospel choir. And mm -hmm. we, me, Staffy Butler, and Tyrone Simpkins started the gospel choir. We brought you in. Yeah. Yeah. I remember. We you, I remember. Yeah. We brought, we would have concerts. It was amazing. I started the gospel choir. I started student council. I was the president of student council. I went in for the sports stuff. I was, I was the gospel choir. So I started the gospel choir at Murray Wright and Staffy carried it on after I left. And um, it was a good choir too. Yeah, man. Y'all listen, I don't know where those singers come from, but listen, they, they were on, they was on top of it. Yeah. When I'm talking about, I mean, progressive, singers i mean they could they could stand with any other community choir in the city yes sir and and yes. we're talking about high school students man high school students so yeah i was the founder of the yeah. gospel choir at murray right you taking me all the way back and and uh we progressed and i turned over the baton when i graduated and uh yeah we had concerts at the school and everything we, we had engagements too Man, you got a uh, listen, Prophet Luther McKinstry is in here, man. That's my buddy. Bless you, man of God. Thank you for joining us, uh, Bishop James Williams. You know, J uh, J.A., the gospel teacher. Now, are we, I'm gonna have him, <laughs> on. I'm gonna have him and his wife, Pastor Kelly, on. Uh, 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 real soon, so J.A. the gospel DJ, yeah, yeah. We're we gonna, I'm gonna bring up all that, that way back in the day stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, so listen, Bishop. Now, you, you, you did, you did Mary Wright, and then you was with your church, and 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 then the gospel music workshop. 
So, 1977, that's the year that it was here? Yeah, yeah 1977. Yeah, came back, came back. Yeah, it came here. So the bicentennial was 1976, I'm sorry, but 1977, it came here. A lady by the name of, well, first of all, the first person that used to pick me up and the only person that my grandfather trusted to go places was Hattie B. Humphrey. Oh, she used man. to pick me up. She used to pick me up for musicals. That's how I learned how to MC. And my grandfather trusted her. She called my grandfather. And um, she. then I met a woman by the name of Lucille Lemon. Girl. Yes. Sir. And uh, my grandfather, she asked my grandfather, could I come direct? And then the gospel music workshop was coming to the city of Detroit. And that's where I joined GMWA. And I am still, I still claim the gospel music workshop. I'm talking about Charles Nix. I'm talking yeah. about James Cleveland. I mean, I literally would go to the convention. I take, hey, hey, Woods, between me and you, I had a little job at the church, right? They was paying me $6 a week to clean the church. I would get all my pay in advance to go to GMWA. We was only teenagers. <laughs> I get all my pay, all right? Yes. And yes, I borrow Reverend Love's suits. Okay. Reverend James Love. I would borrow, he was our musician. I would borrow some of his clothes to go. And I never forget, I went one year with a hundred dollars in my pocket. Yeah. And because of Ed Smith, I came back with more money than I went there with. He hired me. Watch this. And yeah. every time, every time. I, I get on the interview with a certain person. They try to be smart. Albert Jameson. He says, I, I remember you when you were selling books for, for, for Ed Smith. You was, the, you was the book. I said, I ain't did bad from being the book guy. <laughs> I would sell the souvenir booklets and yes, Ed, Ed would pay me and I would come back. I was able to eat. I was able to sleep. Me and Butch would have rooms together. And yeah, uh, it, yeah I, I'm still a part. I don't know how many years that is, 77 to 2021, but yeah. I still claim GMWA. That's what, watch this. My organizing of, of uh, programs and concerts and conferences, yeah. it came from Ed Smith. Yeah, he, he, he was a genius, man. Yeah, Ed, I watched Ed Smith. He trained me. And then, you know, the second person, I got to remember him, Larry Robinson at God's World. Yeah. That was yeah. my second mentor as far as, putting together concerts and conferences that you see everybody that is doing anything you're standing on the shoulders of somebody you don't know larry robinson he still got that that he's he just bought some cds and books from me of mine what an honor he yeah. calls me one of his sons he yeah. told me larry robinson told me he said if you keep on turning rocks over you're gonna find some abundance and so i appreciate him and ed smith who's going on to be with the lord it's because of them yeah that i know what i know about organizing and gospel music and man i'm still a part of gmwa and and not going nowhere love GMWA. Smith flower shop man on East oh my god oh my god ah, hey, what a historical would, sight. The, little, the little white envelopes Yes, <laughs> man, you know what I'm talking about. I, and, 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 and you were a part of the Detroit chapter. So you go all the way back. Let's, let's take it back there, man. Because I remember when, when, when Chris Ware was the chapter rep, we would have Chris some rehearsals. Chris Ware, Lord the, have mercy. My God, listen, we would have some rehearsals at Holy Cross, then some rehearsals at Neil Parliament because he allowed me and Gregory Troy to be his assistant reps back then. We were we were kids. And before that, it was Central Methodist downtown. No, it was the United Methodist, whatever that church is in the circle downtown. We used to rehearse down there, remember? Yeah, yeah, Central Methodist. Yeah, Reverend that. Nix would be there, and oh, man. Yeah. And then y'all took it over. Donald, see, Donald arranged that because that was the church that they had the, the, the summer youth program mm. where he was housing gospel choir rehearsal because i was a part of that program see? yes yeah i was yeah. too but i was under stanley walton yeah stanley walton did it at murray right we got paid the same we got paid the same doc come on now we got a paycheck from the city from the city that we were getting sing. more from the city than we got in our churches 
Because, man, you know, my grandfather told me when I started playing, that I'm not going to pay you to practice on us. I'm investing in you. So you got to invest in yourself. Pay your tithes. And then he was upset when I when I started working at GM and I had to leave on Sunday nights to start my shift when it would start, you know, Monday morning. Because, you know, at Neil Potter, man, we stayed in church. Man, I would get so upset. I didn't understand then because I was young. Mm -hmm. My grandfather, we would have church at 8 o'clock, you know. But around 10, here come, here come Lucille Lemon. Another crowd. Here come James Marks, mm -hmm. Patty Humphrey, Tambourine mm -hmm. Willie. With the tambourines and they white yeah, on. Man, <laughs> here come John Everhart. Yep. And even the Craig brothers, the voices of heavy, Ronnie Kersey. And, and, and sometimes Tommy and them would come with the Craig brothers. He would start church all over again. And do you remember, uh, 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 I'm trying to think his first name, but uh, Robinson from Pennsylvania, uh, from Pontiac. From Pontiac, John Robinson. John Robinson with mm -hmm. the Baptist, Pentecost, yeah, whatever they United choir. Methodist. He had everybody they, in his. They school. had a long name for their choir. Man, we would turn the service into almost a midnight music. Doc, I used to get in trouble. Yeah, because I would some of them times. You know, I wasn't driving yet. I would walk home in the cold. Walk home in the cold because I didn't want to bother them. I'd sneak out before church. Man, don't get me to cry. Cause yeah. I didn't live that far from there. Right. You know, right. we was on Mac and French road, yeah. man. Church would start all over again. And I knew I was supposed to be home by a certain time. And then I start bringing people with me and they get in <laughs> trouble with they, they family and all that <laughs> stuff. Doc, I yeah. didn't care. I was going to church on Sunday night. I would tell some of the saints to drop me off. Cause I was going to church. Didn't nobody yeah. have to beg. That's why I'm tired of it now. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you doc. I'm 59. I've been going since I was I was nine years old. But those were the days, man. Those were the days. Those are the days, like you said. And and I'm, I appreciate you for saying that because uh, uh, I'm glad I got somebody to help me tell these young guys, all of us, including them, we stand on the shoulders absolutely of some of those who mentored us. And, and it's because of them we have, have enjoyed opportunities. You know what, man? I tell people now, I am still living on the residual blessings of being under my grandfather, being yes. connected with Charles Nixon, St. Yes. James, to yes. be connected with Maceo Woods, yes. being connected with Ralph J. Boyd, all yes. of those folk that, that mentored me, Ronnie Kersey, the Craig brothers gave me my opportunity a lot of people talking about they know me from St. James. I ain't listen, I ain't gonna talk talking about me. I won't talk about you. But anyway. To the angels in the kingdom tonight. <laughs> <laughs> to my mother, isn't she looking wonderful tonight? Supreme Supreme Queen Mother. The Reverend Willie Mae Mulligan and yeah. to Otha Mayfield on the organ tonight. <laughs> no, no. Doc, you know what? I am so glad. I feel sorry for some of these young fellas. Yeah. They missed out on this. Yeah, man. And, and when we talk, talking about, now you mentioned the name, you struck a nerve because one of the most organist playing Otha. musicians I Otha. ever met Otha. that could beat that organ. Otha. Man, Otha. I would Otha. wait for them to come on. Otha and Otha I would be there sometime when I left my grandfather's church because, you know, we left, we left Neil Potter and then we went to a uh, 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 universal temple, universal temple, liberty of Christ kingdom. Yeah. And then we left there and went to uh, Madam Gladys Doe's. Mother Doe's. Yes. And Charles B. Ransom. Really, if you was really crazy, you went over there on Linwood. What was her name? Uh, she had the bulldog sitting on Prophet the Prophetess Brown. <laughs> Doc, Prophet you know, I did Leslie a revival R. for her. I did a revival for her. Yeah. Prophetess Leslie Pro R. Brown. Man. Yes. Yes. Listen. We 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 know him. We know him, man. We had that that wonderful opportunity. Betty Hall, Doctor. Yes, Betty Hall. I, I saw Betty her. Hall right before she died, man. I was at Steve's, and yeah. she was still the same. God bless you, baby. Yeah. I love you. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. Oh my God, I'm so proud of you, man. I'm telling you, Eric Mitchell, Bishop Eric Mitchell, who who used to dance, and we'd have to turn the lights on, man. We I 
wouldn't pay nothing for this journey. These young guys, they yeah. missed out on that and, day. St. James down at, at Ford Auditorium, the yeah, concerts. Yeah. yeah. Man, this man, he talking about me. This man is a musical. You remember when I tried to get you to teach me how to play the organ? <laughs> Doc, I just didn't have it in me. You wouldn't practice, Doc. You just. I would not they, practice. They were pulling you 90 different ways. That's true. You didn't have time to sit at no, no. keyboard like, no. like we did. No. You know, no. my grandfather, man, he gave me keys to the church after school. Yeah. I had to walk from Kettering and come straight to Mac and Belvedere and, and Kenny Troy when he was living. He would meet yeah. me there. He would meet wow. me there and help me to learn how to play behind the preacher. That's how yeah. I learned how to play behind the preacher is Kenny Troy, the late Kenny Troy. Chris Ware was with us on Sunday nights after he left Holy Cross during the day. Then we had yeah. this guy named, you remember James Walker would come in yeah. come always yeah. late, you know, yeah. and carry flowers. <laughs> carry flowers on oh the my piano. God, on oh, the piano. And, yeah. and, 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 and Sneaky P on the drums. My Listen, when, when I learned how to play what they called back then the bump music, Mm -hmm. It was on. It was on. Mm -hmm. the, sneaky on the it. sneaky on the drums, and your mama holding up the soprano. She could all by herself on the back. Oh, all by herself. Y'all could have nine people, and out, out, and and way out a choir that had a hundred people. And then, wait a minute, I'm gonna take you all the way back. Then there was the the yearly fellowship with yeah. Cleveland, Ohio. Oh man, Doc, I was running in there like I was a member. <laughs> Faith Temple Baptist Church. Back, you, yes, sir. you going back to the James Simpson days. Yes, sir. Yes, Man, sir. I'm telling you. I, matter of fact, I'm going to have Earl and, and some of them on real soon. Earl McArab, all of those original yeah, Faith, Temple, Man. Faith Temple members, man. I mean, and I'd be like, I got to get down. I got to get down to my other church. If Faith is Cleveland is there today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, we we we've got some history, Bishop, and uh, we might have to do a combo. Black, listen, Brock done came in there. Brock, you ain't called me back. I'm gonna talk about you later, but uh, uh, I need to get him on there. Brock was one of the ones in the midst uh, where your grandfather opened the pulpit, and Brock, and then when once my grandfather heard Brock, he let Brock come. Brock was at Neapolitan all the time. Blessings to you, man. We appreciate I can't you. stand Brock because Brock got the last of my grandfather because I started preaching late. Yeah. Doc, I would come home from school and Brock was at the table. Now, with no computers, my granddaddy would have books open and would make him <laughs> sit there. After, they would go drop my grandmother off at work at 4 o'clock or 3 o'clock. Yeah. They would get some coffee, McDonald's, and come sit there. Brock was there until he would drop Brock off when it was time to get my grandmother at 11 o'clock. Doc Brock got the lesson. You hear what yeah. I'm saying? He got he got the juice from my grandfather. After that, my grandfather was like, get it for yourself. But <laughs> Brock would sit there five hours, man. That's why Brock, and, and I'm we're gonna go back, but Brock can take a napkin and write a message out. Yeah. A whole message out. Cause he set up under. My grandfather, yeah, man, yeah, man, yeah, 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 yeah. That that that's our boy, Doctor Kenneth Brock. <laughs> Doctor Kenneth Brock. Yeah, yeah, man. But but listen, af after the workshop, I, I want to hit this because some people know and some people don't know. They they hear of of the full gospel fellowship, uh, founded by I, I, the one and only Bishop Paul S. Morton, but. When it came to the Michigan State Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship, we need to know, it, all y'all on here need to know, it was Bishop Gregory Michael Davis that pulled together the nucleus, all of the pastors and churches. I mean, the legwork that you did, man, was, was, was awesome and dynamic, how you were able to contact pastors and uh, prepare for bishops coming to share with them the vision of the full gospel Baptist church fellowship, man. Talk about that. So what gave me the influence, and I want to just back up and, and ease into it, is that there was a station called WMKM 
It was the first black gospel station. I was the second radio announcer on there. Right. Kurt May Reynolds was the manager. Yes. And I put in for a job and they gave me the 10 to two shift. Uh, yeah. No, yeah. First, no, first they gave me the two to two to six in the morning. Then they gave me the 10 to two. It was nothing like it in Detroit to have our own gospel station. We had WMUZ, but we didn't have a black station. So um, uh, Mike Gallica hired me. Uh, yeah. I, I, I met Pastor Kim, uh, DK Craig. I got to mention him. Uh, yeah. went, went on to be with the Lord. Uh, um, I preached a lot in uh, Youngstown for the Church of Hope. DK would send me there. And then yeah. I, now let me say this. My first real honorarium came from preaching a youth Sunday at Revival Tabernacle. This Negro right here, excuse my, my French, gave me $750. I had never seen that much money preaching in my life. Andre Woods believed in my ministry to come and preach his youth. He was booming right down the street from where I live on Jefferson at, at the, at PA Brooks's church. Yeah. We I had never in the cathedral. Yeah. I had never preached to that many people. Okay. First of all, and I had never, I got in the car and looked at that. I said, let me hurry up and pull off before this Negro think he gave it to the, that I'm the musician or somebody else. And then call <laughs> and Coletta Vaughn yeah. was the first person that paid me to host a musical a thousand dollars to host a musical. Yeah. I had never got that much money in my life to do any of that. So I want to say thank you. You were a trailblazer giving me that much money. Just start preaching. You let me practice on your people. <laughs> so, awesome. so I, I didn't get DK's church, but I married Pastor Kim. And then we were called to a little church on the corner of Moffitt in Pennsylvania called yeah. Second Unity Missionary Baptist Church. Well, I'm always trying to be, you know, extra. There was a building <laughs> on the boulevard in Gratiot. Yes. Uh, at 800. Yeah. Pastor Kenlock, my, my local pastor here, he still talks about, he said, man, I was a young man. And I heard, he said, if you'd have stayed at Second Unity, it might not have been no triumph. He said, that church was growing. That corner was hot. And so, there was one problem. We moved to the Bullet on the grass ship. I was speaking in tongue. I was laying hands, but I was yeah. Baptist. I changed the name of the church. I had Coletta come one Sunday and my grandfather closed it out. Well, Coletta came and said, ain't none of y'all got the Holy Ghost. Pastor Kim, you ain't got the Holy Ghost. None of y'all got the Holy Ghost. Y'all ain't speaking in tongue. I, mu I must have went up under my seat. My grandfather came next week because we had already changed it to Second Unity Full Gospel Baptist. Not because of Full Gospel, but because of Coletta. I was impressed with the name. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And my grandfather comes the next Sunday, Doc, and says, ain't no such a thing as no Full Gospel. We all been Full Gospel. And I'm like about to, I just need somebody to put a button in the pulpit and just let me. I had to explain that to my people. So yeah. I'm ostracized. Baptist guys wouldn't preach me, okay? Right. When I would invite people to, to our, my conferences, it would be Marvin Winans. I just start pastoring. Marvin Winans, uh, Chucky Ellis, Wayne T. Jackson, all these guys would come. I invited, and when I think about it, man, I was such a big fool. I invited Merritt. I invited uh, Word of Faith, what's his name, Keith Butler. All Keith these Butler. people came to my conference. It was yeah. the Holy Ghost encounter. So then we, we didn't fellowship with no Baptist folk. One morning, Sunday morning, I woke up and was watching BET and the making of the bishop. And I, I woke up. I used to run to Flint to listen to Bishop Morton. I woke up. I woke my, I woke my wife up, my ex-wife up there, and I said, hey, look. And they said this, the first Baptist bishop, full gospel Baptist, if you want him to come to your area, listen, Woods, uh -huh. if you want him to come to your area, he's doing crusades across the country. He's starting a movement. I called Monday morning. Floretta Grant, who's going on to be with the Lord. She answered the phone. She said, Bishop Morton's office. I said, my name is Reverend Greg Davis. A 90, 91, somewhere around that. Mm -hmm. um, 
I, yeah, I see this. I see, get, I want Bishop Morton. Now, Doc, we had 150 members. Mm-hmm. Okay. But I had great faith. And I just knew I wanted to belong to something where I wouldn't be an usher. The guys had stopped having me come preach. When I would go sit at the Minister's Alliance, when I would go sit at the Tuesday Minister, they look at me like I was crazy. So she said, I'm sorry, sir. He has taken all the crusades he's going to do. She said, wait a minute, hold on, hold on. Where are you from? I said, Detroit. She said, hold on, sir. Watch this, Woods. She said, the bishop is in the office. He said, he used to be in Windsor. Mm -hmm. He used to be in Windsor. Hold on. He used to be in Windsor. And watch this. Nobody has called him from Detroit. She said, give us a date. And Bishop wants to come because he don't have nobody in Detroit. Nah, September, his September 19th. Yes. 1990. I remember. Crusade. Okay. But then say everybody say he's always extra. I called the office back. I said, can I put on a luncheon? Can I put on a luncheon that day for Bishop, a reception? She asked him, Doc, when he showed up, First of all, I picked him up in my 190 Mercedes, didn't know who I had in the car, okay? <laughs> he was by himself, didn't know I had who I had in my car. He was so humble. And Doc got in the basement of the church, still got the pictures. Mm. It was over 70 pastors that showed up. Corletta, you name it, they were there. I get back in the car with him. This is no lie. Take him to the hotel, the Western downtown. He says, hey, yeah, you got a lot of influence. I said, Mm -hmm. I said, yes, sir. He said, yeah, listen, uh, as I was getting off the plane, Bishop Larry Trotter just became the 12th bishop. He said, had he said no, you would have been it. He said, but I got something called a state overseer. Doc, he ain't even preached yet. He Mm -hmm. said, I want to make you a state overseer. He said, what'd you say? I said, yes, sir. I didn't even know what it was. (laughs) I dropped him off. When I get back to the church, I tell the people what he said. They cleaning up. They said, what did you say? I said, no, I don't think I want to do that. They said, you said what? Doc, that yes changed my life. That night at Second Unity, the upstairs seated 400, the downstairs seated 400. There was over 200 preachers and pastors that was there that night. That night changed my life forever. Yeah. One phone. I, I want I don't mean to turn this in the church, but there's somebody yeah. that's watching. You are yeah. one phone call away from your destiny. Yes, my sir. grandfather, my grandfather planted, Paul Morton watered, and God gave the increase. Those are the only two spiritual uh parents I had in my whole life. That's I've been testament. with Bishop Morton 27 years. He's not only my bishop, but he is my pastor. He is my, he is my Episcopal father, but he is also my pastor. That phone call changed my life. My grandfather remained in my grandfather for the mm-hmm. rest of my life and his life. But Bishop Morton became that person that took me to the next level. One yeah. man plant, another water, God gives the increase. That's the story. Yeah. I know, man, I'm telling you that. What an awesome story, because uh, as we know, the rest is history and full gospel uh, in this area, man, became, I mean, I don't know if we became you, the leading uh, chapter, so to speak, because uh, of all of those that surrounded you, you know. A hundred churches. Especially having the influence of, of the late Bishop Otis Floyd in this area and and people like that and man i'm telling you what 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 a what an awesome testimony the murphys michael jones yeah, uh, yeah all all were my backbone uh michael jones taught us how to give william murphy yeah. father and son brought in the sound that is duplicated across across the world now yeah i went doc there was no there was no social media there was none i went and knocked on their doors you hear what I'm saying? Right. Rushton and all these guys, Shakespeare, Shakespeare used to laugh, laugh yeah. at us speaking in tone. 
and Shakespeare became the prophet in full gospel and all that. That is so much history. We had our state conferences and they were full. Uh, and then I got promoted over all mm -hmm. of the states and Murphy took it over and took it to the next level. That those were the days. And thank you for even acknowledging that. Um, yeah, but you man. know what? You know what? I'm going to tell you the truth. If I had it to do all over again, I probably wouldn't. I don't think I was ready. You know, I became a bishop the next year right, at 37 right, hey, years old. I know. I know. I mean, I know. the Lord ordered your steps, man. I mean, just something he did. Hey, promotion comes from God. And yeah. and and uh, I know I know that feeling. I know that feeling, man. When I worked start, my way there, though. People don't work their way there no more, Woods. Man, they want it on a silver platter. You know, they want yeah. to inherit. And then what they inherit, here is what I'm saying, Bishop, you can help me with this because I was just talking to some pastors last night, uh, uh, some senior pastors who are looking at the landscape of what's happening. The guards are changing all over the world. I mean, churches, Baptist churches, apostolic church, church of God, everybody. There, there's been a lot of deaths. There's been a lot of retirement. The, the, the landscape is Landscape has changed, but some of these guys that's getting in these places where they are inheriting great ministries don't appreciate what they're getting. Mm -mm. And 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 I'm like, you should they're erasing, in the they're yeah. erasing the history, they're moving the landmarks. Now I'm radical, but there's some things you just uh you just don't mess with that right. you know I'm liberal. I I don't I don't wear a lot of the the, the the regalia but i respect the old landmarks you know what i'm saying there's a difference there's a disrespect now for who your whose shoulders you're standing on you don't even want to mention them you don't even want to mention the shoulders that you're like you just showed up i didn't just show up woods didn't just show up the men that we've named yeah. the men andrew Merritt, who i went right across the street from where i live and went to IHOP and had a meeting with him and said, Bishop Morton is offering me a position to come and start churches in Louisiana. And he looked at me and I thought it was the craziest thing in the world. He said, do you have $10,000 in the bank? You know how you talk. Yeah. He said, you got $10,000 in the bank? I said, no, sir. He said, then what you staying here for? I'm like, what kind of, but I didn't understand what he was saying. Yeah. You, 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 you're struggling here. When you can go somewhere and that move, although it hurt a lot, although it hurt a lot of people, and my grandfather even said to me, uh, my grandfather said, "Ain't nobody ever left their country before." He said, "Well, Abraham, but you ain't Abraham." That was his hurt that was talking. You know what I'm saying? Right. And he he told me, he said, "You're gonna see a lot of things that I hid you from." And he's right. He was all my grandfather was always right. Okay, by the way, he was always right because that was wisdom speaking. But what I didn't do, watch this. This is what you're talking about, Woods. This is what you're talking about. Hey, Anita Willis, this is what you're talking about, Woods. I never forgot him. Every anniversary, every if, if the auxiliaries was given a thousand dollars, I was given a thousand dollars. Yeah. If, if, if they, if I would take my grandmother hats and suits and all that, I never forgot because it was my grandfather that got me to Bishop Morton. See what we do Woods, we mm -hmm. erase and we want to act like you didn't just make it to St. James. No, man. Your grandfather gave you the keys to the church and say, go play. Let me say this. Mm -hmm. While we talk about Reverend Charles Hercules Nicks. Yeah, I used yeah. to run down there every Sunday. Okay, so much so I wanted to make welcome St. James. Then I got frustrated because it wouldn't be that. I never forget, and I thank God for him today. I went to Reverend Nix and had a meeting. Philip was in the office. Philip was mm -hmm. up there. You remember Philip? Philip Britton. Phil Philip Britton. Yeah. 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 I asked. I said, Reverend. I said, Man, I'm thinking about leaving my grandfather's church. I said, I just like it down here. If Reverend Nix didn't say the next words that he said, Brock, Anita, he could have messed up my life. Mm -hmm. You know what he said? No, son, don't come here. You stay with your grandfather. Mm -hmm. And you make welcome a mini St. James. Take what you learned here and help it. He could have said yes. Come on, mm -hmm. son. 
I'll put you, I'll help you help JD and all that. He would have messed up my destiny. Yeah. So I thank God for men like that. That didn't yeah. mess up my destiny. I, I know what you're saying because I'm going to tell you, I had no idea that my grandfather, you know, my grandfather one took me and my brother to Reverend Nick's. Mm. And he was teaching at Worlipster mm. to take piano lessons because my, my music teacher at Grinnell's had died. And so we didn't have a music teacher. So me and my, my brother would catch the bus and go downtown. And so we found that Reverend Nix was teaching there because he would let us go to St. James sometime on third Sundays, uh, right between uh, our, our, our morning and night service that didn't start at eight o'clock. <laughs> and, <laughs> and they were at six. Yeah, and we would yep. run down there and run back. But, but, but Reverend Nix started teaching and training me. And then when the time came, when he became pastor, in 1972, I think it was, uh, he came to my grand. Well, I guess they had some kind of conversation, and I ain't know nothing about. But he told me about it later. He came and asked my grandfather for me. He said, "I need what your grandson has to help me go to the next level." Cause he had got Rufus Pope. You know, Rufus Pope wasn't Baptist nowhere. He no. was kind of across the holiness and all. I mean, Retha Glover. I no, mean, look, look at look at the the as he started building the team, and 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 uh, he told me he said, "Listen, I, I I got good musicians, and and I, but it's just something I need. What you got, you know? Because yeah. you know he loved First Church of Deliverance. Absolutely. I mean, Absolutely. and and uh, and I understood later Absolutely. why on Sunday nights." Uh, he would tell me we getting in the car, we driving to Chicago, and it, it exposed us to, to to First Church. I knew about First Church, but I had never really personally been there. But man, that I understand what you're saying, man. Yeah. And and uh, he was ostracized. Absolutely. I was too because of the connection. They said we don't turn the Baptist Church into a holy roller. So we had acolytes, we had we had all the board, and then he had a woman in the pulpit. Yep, you know, way before uh, Russell yeah. Street and all them churches had 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 uh, women in there. Way yeah. before, yeah, he he doc he was a role model. Him, your grandfather, even Reverend Boyd, even though we may not agree with everything, doc his 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 model of having a live broadcast for all them years and having good church. We may not believe, agree with the doctrine and all that, but all these older guys, man, I thank God for them to this day. I thank God for them. But, but, but here's what really got me is when I started noticing a lot of folk say the pastors themselves did not agree with what was going on, but their people were coming. Mm-hmm. On mm -hmm. Sunday nights, man. I mean, mm -hmm. our Sunday night service at Neil Parlton was was more packed out, nowhere to get, mm -hmm. than Sunday mm -hmm. morning was because people were mm -hmm. coming from everywhere for church, man. They knew they were coming there to get their healing. They were coming there to get yeah. a word, you know, a prophecy. They knew where to come to have good church. They they wouldn't leave their churches, but they would yeah. come and take from there, you know. They yeah. would come and visit and share with yeah. us and and it was it was just an awesome experience and and it was there that I got to meet so many people uh, uh when I think about Ray Daniels I I, I think about uh, William Dancy I, I think about Professor Theodore. Minor yeah Professor Minor because my grandfather took me to Professor Minor too and and uh, Theodore Hubbard and I mean I mean the list just goes on and on of the great influential preachers and musicians that we've had a chance to witness and be a part of their life. And then they sow into us. I mean, like you said, you know, you know, one of the, and all you that. know, one of the greatest moments for me, um, Bishop, I actually preached for your grandfather. <laughs> oh man. I actually, I, I, but, but for, for a young man like me to come full circle was a honor for me. You know what I'm saying? Um, for him to see the, the 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 prophetic word that he preached, and he was older then and all that, you know. But but still, it it just 
This is bigger yeah. than life for yeah. me. People don't understand that this is bigger than life. I thank God for Bishop Morton. And all, I, I could pick up the phone and call anybody. I thank God for all of them. But I had to get to these people before I got to get to the ones that I know now. Yeah, yeah. And and yeah. and, and let, let's shift to that moment because after WMKM and, and, and after all of that, that time of, of sharing on the radio for years, and then you you went to, to uh impact uh and then you 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 did some things with uh, uh the word and then you went back because let me say this and, and i and i don't say this you know to get no points the fact of the matter is and people uh just need to learn how to give folk their just props and their credit and their due because i know from whence you come i can say it proudly and 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 gladly that God has raised you to a place to become one of the most influential voices in, in, in the church today. Uh, uh, and, and I don't believe that the word network would have you on there if your presence did not make a difference, because it does. So even that connection, let's talk television, even the connection with Bishop Morton got me on television indirectly. So there was a man named George Brooks, Bishop George Brooks. He pastored a great yes. church, George Brooks in, in uh, Green, Green, Greensboro. Yes, um, sir. He was on the board of TCT. We were in Louisiana. Full Gospel gave us $50,000 worth of credit cards. Some guys went and bought suits and all that. I went and bought television equipment. Watch this story. It's going to be real quick. I'm going to give you the short version. Um. So I bought television equipment. We were in Louisiana. My sons, Derek and T, they produced a show. Uh, I wanted to just get on television. Mm -hmm. um, so we sent, we sent the, the demo to Detroit, to Glenn Plummer. Yeah. I want y'all to lean in on this, con this conversation. Now, this is going to bless somebody. We sent it to Glenn Plummer. Call Glenn Plummer. I said, Glenn, I said, I haven't heard anything from your um from your network we 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 sent um we sent a, a demo he said hold on let me let me check now glenn Plummer, i used to buy my tapes from him and all my supplies he had a local channel and he said i'm sorry it doesn't meet our standard i'm trying to get on local tv i go to a man by the name of george brooks on the council of bishops full gospel yeah i say i'm trying to get on tv i know you on the board of tct 70 million homes, 200 countries. He then introduced me to a lady by the name of Judy Church. She's the sales director. They just started a 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. spot across the world. Want to know how much it is? $250. I said, I'll take it. I'm always extra. Somebody say, I'm always extra. I'm always <laughs> extra. I asked Garth Kuntz, the owner of TCT, to sponsor for $10,000 a luncheon at Full Gospel for pastors. He comes to the conference. He comes to the room. It's over a thousand pastors in there. He sits down next to me. He's in his 70s, probably then, late 60s, maybe 70s. He looks at me, probably late 60s. He said, Bishop Davis, you got a lot of influence. Same conversation as mm. Bishop Moore. You got a lot, a lot of influence. How would you like to do your own television show? He said, all you got to do is come to Detroit. You ain't got to pay nothing for it. I said, that's my home. He said, we have a studio. You'll be on all over the world for free. That's called it Celebrate Live with Bishop Greg Davis from 8.30 to 9.30 on Thursday nights. I flew for a whole year at my own cost. Meanwhile, I'm having conferences at my church in Delaware. Dave Sheffield comes to the studio. Todd Hall is there. He says he's coming to see Todd. Unbeknownst to me, he's really coming to see the setup because unbeknownst to me, mm -hmm. Kevin Adele, the owner of the Word Network, is watching me every Thursday. He has Lewis Gibbs call me, the vice president, the president of the network then, and says, hey, I was getting off a plane from California. I'll never forget the day. He said, when you come in next week to do your show, we want to meet with you. We'll send a limo for you. Come in a day early. I go to the Word Network. Kevin Adele meets with me. He said, 
I've been watching you. And if you can take that show at a predominantly white station and do what you're doing, I want you to come to the Word Network. And I, I'm going to, we're going to call it Rejoice in the Word with Bishop Greg Davis. There mm -hmm. was no black host that were on every week. Remember, right. once a month, they would put Clifton Davis on or Zachary Timms on once a month to get the black audience. Doc, I was the first host of an African-American show every Friday from eight to 10. People from all over the country, all over the world flew in to do my show. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's how I started. Impact started. I saw the vision of uh, Wayne T. I left Word for about four years and I came back after the network started and I've been in Christian television now for 15 years. Awesome. Consistently. Awesome. So here's my formula. Consistency produces longevity. Yeah. And longevity produces legacy. Yeah, yeah. Say it again, Bishop. But I had to get the Bishop Morton first. I had to get the Bishop Morton first. Yeah. Who got me to George Brooks. Right. Who got me to the little Italian lady. But I had to be denied by Glenn Plummer because I was only trying to be on local television. Can I tell you, this is the close, Doc. This is the close of that story. <laughs> do you know Do you know who Wayne T leased his station from to start Impact? Glenn Plummer, wasn't it? Oh, okay. Now, if you can't figure what I'm saying in that. Yeah, I, I, I got you. I nothing got you. against Glenn Plummer. He right, played right. his part. Right. While y'all trying to be local and trying to get things that is not big enough the way God is taking you. Yes. Because we yes. don't see it through the eyes of God. All right, I'm done. No, I, I see it. I see it. I see it. I saw it. You remember I called you and asked you a question about, about the network. Remember, I asked you, you know, I had some ideas. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I remember. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, that, that conversation. I, I, that's what I'm saying. I, I, I saw it then. I mean, I woke up one morning. I said, "You know, I need to call Bishop Davis." I said because there, there is some story, there's some history there, and how the Lord has brought him. And I need to get him first. I need to get him on here so we can document this, man. I'm, I'm a, we, this is being documented. We saving this because people, like you said, these young preachers. And I was glad when you when you did the young prophets and all of that because some of them young preachers movement yeah yeah some of them were okay and then some of them wasn't wasn't hearing what you was trying to say you know <laughs> and the whole you know the whole purpose because I think what has what and, and 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 you can help me with this I think the fact that they were born during this age of this technology because they've got some likes and they got a few numbers uh they think they don't need no mentor or no pastor over them or you know somebody and the bible says in the multitude of counsel there's safety and iron sharpened iron but some of these cats man it's just like some of the musicians I, I i leave them alone because i try to offer counsel and try to say you know hey 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 hey, hey. you know but but you know after a while if they don't want to receive you they reject you then you leave them alone you know and and I saw what you was trying to do, and I said these some of these cats they not getting it. They they not they they on a worldwide network, and they have an opportunity to receive on another whole level, but but they all excited about their little lives that they doing on Facebook. Yeah, but yeah. They got a couple of numbers, you know. But can you be you know? consistent? Yeah, that's see, it. That's it. See, it, they get tired fast, and the race is not given to the swift. No, to the strong, but to who? To him that endured to the end. Doc, they get tired and they're not consistent. They think that they get it all. And the problem I have, and this is the one thing that I disagreed with them. And I did young preachers so that they could vo give their voice and the older preachers could hear them and how they think. Mm -hmm. um, because the old preachers were saying they don't listen to them. And the young preachers were saying they won't let them talk to them. And a lot of old preachers said we won't talk to them because they don't listen. So there was a gap. So that's why I started 11 years ago um, uh, tweeting about young preacher. 
But the only thing I did not agree with out of all those shows that I did with them, and it's a whole movement now, and they respect me a lot because I listen to them, is that they said that they don't have to pay any, any dues. We paid the dues for them. You may not have to pay the dues that we paid, but you're going to have to pay some dues. Yeah, there's a, yeah, there, I mean, there, 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 throughout the Bible, there's a process. Everybody goes through process. Everybody. Everybody. And I think that that's, that's the issue that I have. That's the only issue that I really have because I don't expect for them to do it the way we do it. The only issue I have is that they won't be consistent enough to be processed for, for watch this. I, Anita, I saw you, I saw you write it in there. They won't be consistent enough for longevity so they can do like we're doing, leave a legacy. Right, right, right. Yeah, right. they won't be considered. Hey, Sandy Rose, I see Sandy yeah, on it. They, they all come in. Bishop, Bishop John H. Lewis uh, from out of Atlanta said, man, greetings and blessings, my brothers. Thank you, Bishop Davis, for sharing your powerful, compelling, and inspirational story. Uh, and man, because, I mean, people know, and, and he's one of them, you know, he's, he's out of Detroit, too. He's one of them who know from whence you come mm -hmm. and how you come. And, and here's my thing, Bishop, I, I, I need your wisdom on this because here we are now uh, in the midst of still some residual from this pandemic. Some churches are getting back to in-person worship and others are not, but uh, um, how do, what do we do with this, with this uh, situation of uh, when you spoke of legacy and longevity and mentorship and preachers changing of the guard, how, how should we approach uh, uh, mentoring this generation now? Because I, I, I'm, I'm a little weary with, with what they, their excuses, yeah. you know? And, and how do we bridge that gap? Because you know, now we're old school to them. And I keep telling them one day, y'all keep living, you are gonna get to be old. That was my grandfather's favorite statement. Just keep living, Sonny. Yeah, <laughs> just keep living, Sonny. Just, just keep on living. So, to answer your question, and this is going to sound kind of um, um, like I'm not trying to answer a question, but Bishop, you're doing it right now. You, 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 you pivoted. There's some guys that's not even doing this. I, I don't know if we would be doing this today if it wasn't for the pandemic. You yeah, know what yeah. I'm saying? It's caused us to expand ourselves. And they may not say that they're listening to this conversation, but there's one thing about the social media and internet. It stays here. And yeah. folk, that, folk that you think ain't watching, they're going to be watching this, Bishop. They listening. Yeah, yeah. They listening. They, 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 they listening. And those that don't listen, there's always. Woods, let me say this. You know, it was some stuff we didn't listen to. Oh, yeah. Under our, you know, every generation rebels in a different way. Okay. We rebelled in our way. I, I was big enough to go in my grandfather's office up them steps and tell my grandfather he needed to fire James Love. I was out of order. Mm. And you know what he told me? Well, can you play? I said, no, <laughs> I, I didn't finish. Yeah. My grandfather, he did when he, when he, he said, he looked right with that one eye at me and over his glasses and said, can you play? I said, no, sir. So let me get this right. You want me to get rid of somebody that can play because uh -huh. you're feeling yourself now and think he's obsolete. He's faithful. Mm. He's here all the time. Okay? And so he ain't going nowhere. My God. He ain't going nowhere. But that was really God pushing me, the eagle stirring the nest thing. Because mm -hmm. had I not done that, you remember I went to Bishop Nero's mm -hmm. a minute? I learned stuff from him, okay? And then I went to Craig Memorial. Yeah. And went through my divorce and I received my call in the Craig Memorial. And my grandfather was like, okay, you can preach your first sermon there. They cannot license you. They cannot ordain you. And they will not install you. License is coming from me. Yeah. Ordination is coming from me. I'm bringing the whole church that night. Okay. 35 years ago, this past October, the second Sunday. My God. Seven Mile and Myers. Okay. Yeah. So everything he told me was true, but I was a little rebellious. This generation is no different than us, Woods. 
Right, they, right, right. We just then got older and we the one on the other side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so we have to watch this and I'm done. We got to give them a chance to learn what they think they know and really don't know. Right. And we got to be here for them. When they and, we got, and we can't be like I told you so. We have to be here for them through right. the things that we, we messed up. Mm -hmm. Just like them. The only difference is, is we're older now. We, we're what? Hell, I done messed up since I've been older. Yeah. I won't tell you how many times I messed up. Yeah, because I got I got Billy Davis in my blood system. That's my daddy that I don't talk about. That's my daddy, you know, that's in my I got, system. I got I Sonny Woods in my, I know what you're talking about. I yeah, I got Billy Davis in me. You know, he's 80-something years old. Papa was a Rolling Stone. But we have Man. to allow them to find out what they don't know. And watch this. Be there for them. Don't throw them away, Woods. Don't, don't, don't. Right, throw right. Them. They, man, I've had so many betrayals by sons and daughters and people that I've helped, people that mm -hmm. I've given the television, people that are now that won't even, you know, I thank God for Brian Karn and I thank God for Manasseh Jordan and, and, and Seneca, all those young prophets that do acknowledge and yeah, say, yeah. if it wasn't for Bishop Greg Davis, I was on his show. But then there's another bunch. So I'm not throwing away. I'm mm. not throwing away this generation. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm not. So just be here for them. And right. they're watching. Do more stuff like this yes. so they can know. I celebrate you, my friend, that you made it through COVID, that you made it through sickness. Mm -hmm. And to coin a song by a friend of mine that I know very well, I feel like going on. <laughs> Though trials come. <laughs> On every hand. On every hand. I feel like going on. I feel like going on. No trials come. You know that song? Yes. I know, you know it, Doc. I know it. I know. I know it kind of, kind of well. Kind of kind well. well. Yeah. I, I think yeah. it. I, I think it was a blessing to you a little bit. Uh, oh, it's, and still is, Reverend. And still is. So yes, I say. Uh, I say. I say. Keep on doing this so that they can sneak in. They yeah. can sneak in. And and That's I celebrate true. you for pivoting, and not getting stuck in the building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, man, through my sickness uh, last year, I said to God, I said, you know, I'm not going to church and now church shut down. Give me something. And and through the Fellowship of Music and Arts, he gave me spotlight on music. And I mean, it just started coming. And then he said, listen, there's some people that you know, not only you, but there's some stories that need to be told that can preach you need to do something called This Is My Story. And I started, man, I started with Vanessa Bell mm. last Sunday in May. I had her, she was my first guest and I let her just tell her story. And uh, the rest has been history, man. We've been, we've been, I've been praying, God, show me who to have on and next and do all this. I've got some great guests coming starting next month, but uh, uh, I wanted to get you here, man. But listen, this is what, before I forget this question, Bishop, I need you to speak into the life of some of our pastors who are 50, 60 and over, uh, who feel like they've been made to feel like their ministries are over. They have no use. Some of them are still passionate. Then you have others. And uh, cause I've been telling people the story of Caleb and all of that about give me this mountain. And, and I think some of them who are still in position uh, who are preparing now for transition and passing the mantle uh, so that they can move and bring someone in, which is a whole nother story because some of the churches don't prepare properly for transition in that, in that way of the changing of the guard. But, 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 but those of us who've been here a while and understand how it go, Bishop, will you, will you share your wisdom to the, the preachers, the 50, 60, and all the guys and the women of God who are struggling with being accepted or their ministry uh, and, and said, say to these young people, they need to lean and learn from these folks. Reimagine. That's the first series I preached soon as the pandemic. It's time to reimagine, to rethink, to reinvent, to rebrand. You're sitting watching us with a man who has reimagined, reimagined life at this point, reimagined yeah. 
reinvent yourself. I'm doing relationship stuff now. People stop yeah. me on the street now and say, oh my God, I watch you. I'm thinking they talking about the word network. No, they're talking about relationship. Oh my God, I left that no good man. I reimagine. <laughs> I took my lemons, the failure of marriage, and made yeah. lemonade and put some sugar on it. You're not done. I'm 59 years old. Yeah. And I am at the prime because I reimagined, I rethought, I rebranded. I know y'all don't like that word rebrand because it sounds secular. All it means is to reimagine. Disney, Walt Disney. Yeah. He had to reimagine and rethink. And today, we are mm. still going to what he rethought and reimagined. He was fired. Yeah. Because he was too creative and he saw a mouse and a duck. Y'all not <laughs> saying nothing. Yeah, I'm saying yeah, I'm with you, Bishop. A, 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 a mouse and a duck and a miss mouse and, and a miss duck and, and all them folk because he reimagined life. Hey, I don't care how old you are. I don't care yeah. if who you are. I do believe that there is a time that God puts us on the stage and it is our season. But you know what I also believe? That we never leave the stage. God just brings other people on to add, but they still need us. We need them and yeah. they need us. Reimagine, don't be afraid of social media. Don't be afraid of lives, uh, doing what Bishop Woods is doing. If you just get on, somebody mm -hmm. will come. There's somebody that still needs your voice. And to the young preacher and to the young musician, you would be better off to listen to these stories because this is our story. This is our song. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But they will help you to know that it's possible. So reimagine what else is it you like to do? Have a master class, bring young preachers together and teach them what you know. You're a great sermon writer. Pastor Kenneth Brock, I know he probably ain't on here no more. I told him he's one of the greatest sermon writers. Teach these guys how to write sermons, how to say something. Yeah. Huh? Bishop Woods, we know him as a musician, but Bishop Andre Sonny Woods is one of the greatest Bible teachers. And I celebrate him because it was hard because Neapolitan wanted to shout. But when he got up, mm, yeah. he'd make them get them Bibles out because the granddaddy, you know, he's old school and they'd be sitting there because but, but he was one of he's one of the greatest Bible teachers there is, y'all. Reinvent yourself. He's reinventing himself. That's my word. Reimagine yeah. life. Reimagine ministry. You don't Man. have to ride off into the sunset because you retired. Yeah. New life begins. Yeah. Oh, what a wonderful change. <laughs> That's powerful. That's powerful. Yeah. Reimagine, rethink life now because you're opening up another season and phase of your life. Yeah. <sighs> Providence Anita Willis. I mean, she just, yes, yes, yes. I see Bless you. you woman of God. Yeah. I love Anita. I yeah. remember, oh, I remember wow. Velma. That's, that's Velma's daughter, right? Yeah. 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 Yeah, I remember Velma Willis. Oh my God. And, uh, you and you I, have to you have to go back on YouTube and watch. I had the Willis family on here. Oh with no. The father and all of the siblings. Man, oh, wow. I, I when when they got through with me, yeah, I, I can mean, imagine. Uh, John, I, I mean, oh man, I I I I don't even want to start talking about it. So you know, I'm gonna tell a secret. I'm gonna embarrass and make a blush. I used to have a crush on Anita. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, love, beautiful, beautiful black, beautiful, woman. beautiful, powerful, mighty yeah. in the Lord, and yeah. uh, I'm, uh, she, she, she is just a jewel, and uh, being surrounded by all those brothers, well, she, she stands out and holds on. Yeah, and, she uh, does, she does. Yeah. And John, John, man, oh man, yeah. such a musician, man. He, he, when I hear him, I hear, I hear you, you know. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, I, I thank God. For some <laughs> Anita's talking about what? <laughs> yeah, he um he 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 got what Reverend Nix and all of us showed him, man, but he has 
God has given him a fresh anointing to do him. And I, that's why I tell all the guys, I mean, even when I did my first album cover, I, I, I said, I stand on the shoulders of all of them that mentored me, but I am because they were. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people need to get that. You, you, you didn't get here by yourself. Mm -mm. You didn't open the door because you didn't know what door to open. You know, it was, you know, so I think a Bishop, man, you have blessed us this day with your story, with your counsel and your wisdom. Let me ask you, what's what's ahead of Bishop Gregory? Well, man, man, let's go back. Let me, I can't leave it out. Talk about your publications and also talk about your recordings uh, before we go, you know, your CD. So Greg Davis, of all people, with his no saint and self, Bishop Woods, they're playing my CD all over, uh, Sirius Radio, all the radio stations. Um, Bishop um, G.E. Patterson went home to be with the Lord, Bishop Ronald Brown. Yeah. So back 14 years ago, I recorded in Wilmington, Let the Healing Begin, part one, and it was old school. Um, DJs across the country was playing the medley. So 14 years later, I told Craig I wanted to do it again. We recorded in October during the pandemic of last year um, at um, the North Campus of Triumph. My pastor opened up his doors and the CD is doing phenomenal. They're playing, the first one was Lord, I Need a Miracle by Solomon Burke. Um, and then I came out with a church medley and it's being yeah. played It's being played all over the country. That foolish Albert Jameson called me, boy, boy, I, I, I was just listening to the radio and I didn't even know that was, man, man, you just like a cat. Throw you out the window, you just keep on coming back. He said, man, I love the single. So if you have not heard it, it's Let the Healing Begin, volume two. I'm ready to do another one. I've asked Bishop Woods if he would come do a couple of his grandfather's songs on there that I want to include. I take a, a, I go down memory lane. It's 26 songs. So yeah. you can go wherever music is streaming, or you can go to gregdavisshow.com and order a physical CD, gregdavisshow.com. And then I have a new book and I'm done. Um, the do's and don'ts of dating. Um, this is kind of my other reinvent, reimagine. I'm taking all my failures of marriage and dating and putting it in here. So this just came out not even a month ago. Go to gregdavisshow.com and peruse it. So I appreciate that, Bishop. Oh man, that what what a joy it is to share with you today, man. We go so far back. It's such a blessing. And listen, friends, if you missed any part of this, it'll be on Bishop Andre S. Wood's Facebook page, and it'll be on my YouTube channel as well. And listen, do me a favor, like and like and share and subscribe to the YouTube channel. You will go back and find so many nice interviews of some great people in the body of Christ that I'm sure you will be blessed by. Got some business people, some entrepreneurs, and some of everybody uh, uh, is a part of This Is My Story family. Bishop, man, I just want to uh, congratulate you on all of what you've been able to accomplish. And I want to pray now for you and share. And I want all of you that are out there sharing with you, pray with me. Father, we thank you for this opportunity of fellowship and we praise you for the man of God, Bishop Gregory Michael Davis. We thank you for his life, what you've done in him, with him, and through him. And we give you glory for what you're going to continue to do with him, in him, and through him for the cause of Christ, that we in the body of Christ might be edified and you may be glorified. Now, God, I pray Psalms 90, 17 over his life, and let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon him establish the work of his hands upon him. Yea, the work of thy hands, establish thy will. God, we pray that continually, whatsoever his hands touch, yes. you will cause it to prosper in the name of Jesus. Now, God, if there's any need in his life right now, supply it in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we pray that you'll bless him physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, and financially, God. Anoint him afresh for the days of ministry ahead. Anoint the airwaves continually and prepare the ears of the people that they might hear a fresh word out of the mouth of your now day prophet. Continue to increase his influence, God, that Amen. as he speaks, those who need to hear 
will hear a life-changing word through his ministry. And God, if you do this, we'll be so careful to give your name to praise. This is your servant's prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. And thank God. Well, man, I owe you. I'm, I'm like Paul. I'm a debtor. <laughs> so, thank you for sharing your Sunday afternoon with us here at uh, This Is My Story. And listen, friends, again, I, I, we enjoyed you. Thank all of you. I won't start calling no more names, but bless all of you who jumped in the comment section to share your time with us. We pray that you've enjoyed uh, this time with Bishop Davis and myself. And listen, uh, continue to pray with him, for him. Continue to pray with me and for me. And listen, until next time, Bishop, I love you, man. Love uh, you we too. We'll get together next week. Until next time, love I you. command the blessings of the Lord to overtake you. That is my prayer for all of you. Blessings. <laughs>